So now we've got the look of our form set up. Let's have a look at the different types of questions we can add. So when you open up a form by default, it'll give you one question. So there's one question that's already been added. Um, and now this one is a multiple choice question. At the moment, it's called untitled question and there's only one option. That option is called option one. If you want to change the type of question, you'll see over here, you've got a drop down menu here from multiple choice. So let's click on that quickly and let me explain the different question types that you have. The first one is short answer. And this is typically if you want them to answer in one or two or three words. If you just want a very short answer, for example, let's use this one now. We're going to take a short answer and we're just going to make the first one name. There we go. There it is. Now, with every question that we've added, we have additional features available. So you can either make a required question by clicking on the, that button. So that's going to change it into being a required question. And then when you click on the um, the options here, and every question has this kind of, well, most of them have this kind of functionality. There's two, two options that we've got here, description. What description does is it gives you an extra little line that you can have in there. So here I can say, please enter your full name, excluding your surname, which is not technically a full name, I understand that, but there we go. And now we can also select the option for response validation. Now what response validation is, or does, is response validation forces someone to enter it into a certain or to enter a certain kind of value. So if I select response validation, you'll see this is useful if you want to, for example, make sure that they send you a phone number and not type out something weird that you don't want there. Or you want to make sure that they send you an email address that's actually a valid email address because this is a, often some, an, an issue. So you'll see here when I've opened up the response validation, I've got the, these two settings. For the first setting says what type of value is this going to be? Number, text, length, regular expression. Don't worry about the regular expression because that gets very complicated. Number, text or length is quite useful because if you don't want long answers, you limit them. Length. If you ask them, please answer your experience or given a, what was your experience in one word, you're going to limit the length and you're not going to allow them to write a long paragraph there. Um, text is quite, or number of course is quite useful because now we're going to have a number that they need to enter and we've got a greater than it, all these various things you can, you can choose. So they have to enter something. So you can be specific about the information that you want to get from the person. This is especially useful when it comes to surveys, not so much the quiz, but remember we're focused on the survey for now. All right, um, and then you can enter all sorts of details there. So let's say the first thing we want is we want text um, and we want it to. It shouldn't contain a space, please. Well, actually, it should contain a space. We don't want it to contain a comma. So now I can make sure they can't enter text with a comma in it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Just as an example, right? So we're happy. First question done. They'd say plus. Now we're going to add another question. So please note. When you're moving around in your form and you want to add a question, let's say this is now our first question, but we don't actually want, if we're going to click plus here, it's going to add a question to the bottom. Um, so let's do that quickly. Now we've got plus, and now we're going to give them the option, and I'm going to show you quickly the auto um, functions that, that Google has for us. If I just type surname, it automatically detects, well, that can't be a multiple choice. It must be a short answer. And there we go, short answer text. Now I'm not going to add all the other little details there to this one, but again, it is an option to add these things. Right now we're going to add another question. And this time we're going to say, we're going to ask them, um, let's say we'll ask gender, for example. Now again, what Google does quite cleverly is it's, it, it picks up options. So we're going to we can have all these options. If you want to just limit them to male and female, you can do that or you can add an other option. Now, let, let me quickly explain how the other option works. If we've got an other option, what happens here is if they select other, it gives them the opportunity to type something else. It, you can go and do this 
we add another option by clicking other. But the problem is if we do that, they're going to click on other, but they won't have the option to actually say what they mean by other, if that makes sense. So make sure you understand the difference here. Right, we're going to remove that and we're going to say add other. So now I've got three options, male, female and other. If they want to type something else in there. Right, so now we've got our basic information there already. Let me pause here quickly and show you another very, very popular mistake that people make. And this is the check boxes versus multiple choice boxes. Because we tend to think, OK, checkbox means I tick. That's the answer that I want to select. The problem with a checkbox is a checkbox allows you to select multiple options. So if um, if I refer to to the the, the form that we um, the, the 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 form that you had to fill in, there were multiple choice options in there, but there were also checkboxes in there which act very differently. So be very careful. This is a very typical mistake that people make, especially when we get to quiz, because if they need to fill in this, there can't be a male and a female and something else simultaneously. It's one or the other. So radial boxes, the radial box, the circle, you can only select one, check boxes, you can select multiple options. Right, so we're going to just go back there. Um, and now we've now we've already captured the basic information that we want here. So let's take a look at another type of question, and that is the drop down menu. So if you've got a long list of things, right? So let's say we, we need to um, collect something, a very, very lengthy um, list of information. Let me just quickly grab a long list of information um, and then we're going to copy it in. So I'm just going to go to our pre-registration um, our pre-registration form and just go copy the school, the different schools that we've got in there, right? Um, and I want to show you how we can do that as well. And just remember everything that we do with capturing this information, all of it we do through Google, um, through Google Forms. So it becomes quite important to, to understand how you are going to deal with with um, information, how you're going to collect information, etc. So, just to show um, this to you quickly, I just want to get to a point where we're not sharing sensitive information. Right. So, I just want to show you how we can do this. So you'll see here's a, a, a Google sheet that we have of the different schools that people registered from for the session. So what I can do is I can select all of these schools. Now that is 86 different fields that I've selected. Select them, right click, copy, and then we go back to our form. And here at the first one, we right click and we just paste. And you'll see now I've got 84 options. Can you see the usefulness in this? And we're going to get back to this when we get to the um, when we we start looking at um, our, our, our quizzes, for example, that we're going to set up. So then we've got a whole variety of options. It's all listed over there, right? And we're going to say school as an example. What I want to show you now, the next the next important thing is as you are building your form. It's a good idea to kind of refer back to it. What does this thing look like while I'm building it? Because this what you see here is not what the form is going to look like in the end. So the next button that I that you need to be very mindful of is the preview button. So you're right at the top. Remember over there we had the customize button. Next to it, we've got the preview button, the little eye that you click on. Now if I click on the preview, what it does is it opens up the form the way that it's going to look when you send it to someone. So you'll see here I've got my name, I've got my surname, I've got my gender, and you'll see if I click other, I can type something else if I want to. I've got male or female or other, and school, I've got a long drop down list. Now what I want to, what I want to take you back to the form because another classic mistake that people make, let's go, let's actually break this one a little bit. So we're going to change this into checkboxes and I'll show you why we don't want to do that. 
And we take these long lists and we actually don't make them drop downs, but we make them multiple choice. Now let's see why that's not a good idea. I'm going to click on the preview. Right, so here's my example form. Everything looks fine, but now I get to the gender. Suddenly I'm allowed to select all of this, which makes no sense. And when it comes to school, now I need to find the school that I, where on earth is the school that I'm looking for, right? So now suddenly I can't find my school because I'm doing it this way around. Whereas if we made sure that we actually use a drop down, and I hope you can see how quick and easy it is to switch between the question types that we're using. And we just go back to the multiple choice. Now, if I have my form and I preview it, when I get to the school, what's especially useful is I can start typing something. Um, no, it doesn't want to work. Right. Um, it's again, it's more useful to make it alphabetical. This is not an alphabetical list, but you can usually you can start typing something and it'll immediately find that for you or again alphabetical is, is generally speaking the best the best course of action right so this is a lot easier to deal with than having all those things in the radial option so just be mindful of those small mistakes that that we make when setting up a form right so <coughs> It's obviously it's a bit of a it's a bit of a, a, a frustration when you're setting it up when you've got these long lists because you do have to scroll to um, you do actually have to scroll to the point where you're going to get to the end of it. But what I also want to show you now what's useful is moving things around. So if we want to move questions, you'll see when we select things, there's always these little blocks that appear. Can you see there's a block next to the So if I realize oh, this is a mistake, we want to move this one. We're going to move it right to the bottom because alphabetically W should be at the end. We're going to move it right there to the very end. And sometimes it, the, the, when we move things around in this way, it, it often does strange things if it's such a long list, um, especially when we need to start scrolling. It doesn't always pick up where I want to place it. Um, so you'll see names are starting to move around so I can move it some back over there. Usually in these long lists, just a, a, a general suggestion. Make sure that you've got your information sorted beforehand. So if I were, for example, to go up to this pre-register and I wanted to copy this list into, into the thing, I would rather go and make sure that it is sorted alphabetically and then copy it in, if that makes sense. So sort your information, then get it loaded in. But anyway, that's another um, thing we, we can look at. So. Just to discuss one or two other question types, and um, when we get to the quiz, there's one other very useful one that I want to look at specifically, and you're going to see it's interesting one to be able to use, especially in a quiz setting. In a survey, I'll be, I haven't used it yet, um, so then we'll, might, maybe you run into useful ways of using it in a survey as well, um, but it requires a little bit of creativity to deal with it, especially in a survey. So. Or other options that we have that we haven't looked at yet. Um, the file upload, I'm not going to go into that. Uh, I have made a short video that I will make available to share with you just to explain what the file upload works like because it takes a little bit longer to explain. Um, one or two other things we can look at the linear scale. So here I can just say rate the quality of your training. And we can say um, poor and excellent. So you filled in a linear question when I um, when you had to fill in that first survey, there was a linear question in there. There was a multiple choice question in there. There was a tick box question in there. So there's a couple of different options that I used in that one already. Um, the ones that are a little bit more complicated are the multiple choice grid and the checkbox grid. We're going to come back to them when we look at the quiz and how to set up a quiz. Right, the last two you could look at, I think they're very self-explanatory, date and time. So just identify date so we can add a date. So here they need to just say, um, let's say birthday, your um, birth date. And then they have a question where they can click on a calendar and can navigate to the thing. 
Same story when it comes to time, we can actually ask them to enter a time value. Um, what time were you born? Not that we can remember that, but there we go. So these, this is a date question and that is a time question. Um, which which is again useful in terms of a survey because we know we're going to get the information in a specific way. So especially if you start having to use that information at a later stage in a in a sheet, for example, you want them to have to enter an actual date and not to type out the date 7 September because once you allow people to type things, no one can spell. You're going to get 10 people that spell September in 10 different ways and the system is not going to know what you're talking about. So very important to keep that in mind. Um, when we when we've gone through all the question types and different things, I'm going to just talk about one or two very important things in terms of best practice that you need to keep in mind when designing surveys specifically. So now that we've added all of these different question types, so that we've gone through the question types um, that we've got available. Now we maybe we want to start looking at adding something else to this. So what are these other options that we've got on this side? The top one, the plus we know is the adding question. Over there is the import questions option. Um, we're not going to go into that one into too much detail now, but essentially what that allows me to do is to open up other Google Forms that I have access to. Either, other, it can be other forms that I created or forms that I'm a collaborator on, and then it can just pull in questions. You can pull in all of the questions from that form or one or two questions from that form, depending on how you how you want to use it. So it's it's a very useful way of of making copies of parts of forms, especially. It's a very useful little trick because maybe you want to have your Google form and multiple classes are supposed to use different forms, but you don't want all the same questions or you designed a form last year, you want to use some of the questions, but not all of them. Very cool trick to be able to import questions. The next one under that, um, I think this is a well-known universal sign for adding text. So if I click on that, it just simply gives me a part to add text. So you can add a, a different title. So if we want to, um, there's various ways in which you can use this. If you just want text somewhere in your thing and you don't want it to be um, a question that they need to answer, you need to, um, make some sort of um, announcement. So, so let's say we're going to say disclaimer. The information in this form will not be distributed to anyone, etc. Right. So now we're just going to use. Now we just have some text that's going to appear in there. The next options that we have is the add images option. Right. So now we can add an image. If we click on the add image, it opens up this default insert image thing that, that Google uses. So there's a whole bunch of options that you can use to insert an image. We can upload something. You can activate your camera. Um, oh, there my webcam is working again. So there I can activate my camera. I can go by URL. I can use a, I can insert photos that I already have. I can go into Google Drive or sometimes by far and away the fastest is just to use Google image search to insert an image. So let's just say we're going to we're going to look for Google Forms. We're going to look for a Google Form image and we're just going to paste this image that we want. So you can select whichever image you want to use. So let's say we're going to select that image and we're going to say insert and there we go, a giant image of Google Forms. And we're going to say Google Forms logo. Now, once you've inserted a, an image, again, something that you have to be mindful of because we're going to find it all over the, the various Google tools is the three dots. Now, on an aside note, the three dots is essentially like, like right clicking because if you right click in different places in Google Chrome, it doesn't actually have anything. If you look at these options, it has nothing to do with the page itself. It has to do with Google Chrome. So it doesn't give us options here. So the three little dots is kind of like right clicking on something. So if I click on those three dots, you see I get the options of what I can do here. I can left align it, center align it, right align it, or I can change the image, or I can just remove it if I want to. 
those are my options. Again, we're somewhat limited in what we're allowed to do. Um, we can also resize it. If you click on the image, you'll see the block forms around it. And then I can just change it because that's a little bit too big for me. Deselect it again, and then the three dots appear. Three dots and center line, and there we go. There we've got our Google Form image. Just note, if you click on it, the three dots won't appear. If you don't click on it, the block um, the block won't appear. So you can resize it, and then you can change, shift it, center line, left line, right line. However you want to use it, right? The video works very much the same way. If I got, if I'm going to click on Add Video, the difference is the video doesn't give you the upload option. You can do it in two ways. You can either search YouTube, and you're going to find a video, or you can go to, or you can paste a URL that you've got already. So um, what I want to just show you very quickly, if we go onto YouTube, um, I'm just going to go to this channel quickly and, and go grab a video from here. Right, those of you who have not managed to wander over to our YouTube channel, there's a ton of very useful videos on here. So please go 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 to our site and go see if you can um, see if you can uh, find some of the videos, have a look at some of the videos. So I'm just going to go grab this video. Let's grab the, the, the shareable link. So in that way, or just simply if you open up YouTube and you found a video, um, I'm just going to go straight into YouTube. Here's a, here's the video itself playing. Um, you can actually just go and copy it right here at the top. You can copy that if you want to. Or you can use the share option, click on the share option and get that link. So any kind of way that you would normally link to a YouTube video, you just copy that. Google Forms wants things to be in YouTube for the most part. Um, I know there are exceptions to that with a URL that sometimes works, but it's it's actually just easier just to do that. And um, so we just go to URL and we just paste it in there. And there we go. There we can insert our video into um, of four. And we've got the same functionality. We can resize it if we want to make it very big. We can use the options, and the options will allow us to left align, center align, or right align. So now what gets quite what, a nice thing that you can do, for example, is include a video into your form and then add questions to that video underneath the, the um, add the questions to that video, for example. So let's say I'm going to say, watch this um, video and then answer the following questions. Right, so you can do this in a number of different ways. Um, so there's a caption we can add for the video as well if we want. I'm just going to take that away because we've already kind of explained it here with watch the video and then answer the following questions. So yeah, I've got my video inserted into my form. So let's go have a look at what the form looks like now. Um, we're going to click on preview. And there we've got our form. We've got our information filled in. And then we scroll down and there's a whole bunch of things. 